Hey y'all, welcome back to Mark McMorris Infinite Air. I'm in Zedek with me. This time is just Turo. Hi. So another part, part three. We're gonna be going to circuit mode tier three, but choosing the pro again that we uh you know unlocked last time. Torstein period. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't know any of these pros. Um, Torstein Horkmull, I don't know. Yeah. I don't speak Norwegian. I actually didn't really even know Mark McMorris, which is weird because, again, like, you look him up and he actually has the most X Games medals of anyone yeah, now. Including like, Sean White. Like, yeah. As like soon as got, Sean White retired, he became the snowboarder. Yeah, like, he's the face of X Games snowboarding and Olympic snowboarding for the U.S., I mean, yeah, he's like, worthy of putting his name on this game. It's just I hadn't really yeah, heard of him. It's, it's weird. no longer the zeitgeist. I know um, we talked about Craig McMorris in one of the two previous videos. I forget which one. But Craig McMorris, of course, is Mark McMorris' brother. He is also a snowboarder, but he mostly does the commentary for the X Games events now, I believe. Oh. Yeah. Really? He's, yeah, like, remember the, if you... You got this far in Sean White's Snowboarding, I assume, but, like, when you got to, like, one of the events and, like, they have the normal commentator and then the former pro snowboarder commentator who's, like, really bored and, like, wants to go home, <laughs> while the yeah. other sports commentator is, like, you know, a stereotypical sports commentator. Craig McMorris is not that. He's a hype man. Oh, pretty okay. Much. Yeah. I thought you were going to say that was voiced by Craig or something. No, no. Craig McMorris, uh, he's good at his job. As a snowboarder himself, he provides accurate color commentary while okay. also being very excited about everything that ever happens. It's kind of interesting. That's like the second time that happened. If you remember the Dave Mira series, you know, recipes again. But there's Dave Mira and then Tim Mira. Yeah. 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 Um, so Nepotism anyway, yeah, or... this this game, it's, it's not like there's going to be any sudden twists. You know, it's not going to turn into a zombie mode or something. But I guess other things to talk about. Uh, normally we talk about the soundtrack. God, the soundtrack is so small in this game. It must be like five or six songs. I swear to God. It's uh, weird. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's, okay, wait, 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 wait. You have, yes, you do have the licensed songs. I have, I heard them in the background. I was wondering if, because it's like, yeah, there's like four it's, generic tracks and four licensed tracks. Yeah. But they have surprisingly big names, like... There's an really? Iggy Pop song in here. Oh, that yeah. That punk rocker yeah, song, I... that's Iggy Pop. Really? Yeah, and then there's also uh, Doused by Dive, which I learned this recently, um, was apparently going to be in GTA V, that specific song, and instead ended up in this game. Huh. But I love that song. That song is on my Spotify playlist. Yeah, and I mean, then, the... The songs yeah. in this game, aside from the one or two electronica, which again, like, they're not bad, they're just not super memorable, like, are pretty good, it's just, again, there's so few of them. This is definitely the smallest, like, licensed soundtrack I've ever seen. Smaller than even, like, Sean Palmer, which was only, like, 12, 12 songs, yeah. Yeah. So you'll be hearing them over and over and over and over. Although I guess the difference is is that, you know, Activision 02 was on top of the world in 2001. Meanwhile, this right. company mostly was had... porting Madden to PS2 at this point. Right, and you had motherfucking Spine Shank. Yeah, yeah, we looked up what HP Studios did, and they did a lot of, like, uh, I, I, I don't want to say secondary, but ports to... Well, you yeah. know, secondary is kind of right, you know, of yeah, like... It was a porting when, house. Yeah, porting house. And when, like, PS3, Xbox 360 was the main series, they were doing the back ports to PS2, Wii, and then vice versa. Yeah. For, like, rugby games, MLB games, hockey... To clarify, I mean, Rugby 08 more. was never on Xbox 360. They Sorry. just made yeah, that I, game. Yeah, no, I just remember it. seeing yeah. rugby as part of... Uh, yeah, they mainly... They were in charge of sort of, like maintaining the PS2 versions of the FIFA games, because those famously, like, were the last games on PS2. FIFA 14 came out on PS2. They were yeah. the team that was behind, like, keeping the lights on for those. So it's, again, kind of funny that this is, like, the second time this happened, where a studio that mostly, um, 
was just sort of supporting the major publishing houses or so went at, re, you know went and did their own extreme sports game thing for one game and then kind of went back to what they were doing before what was the yeah. other one it was radical it was radical entertainment, entertainment the studio behind um dark summit dark summit i don't think they were a reporting house but they weren't making very good like I, notable games i swear there was another one and not criterion uh, yeah, Criterion. Criterion, there was, Criterion did there Airblade like at the same time. Burnout extreme sports time. game we did where the the developer was yeah some like kind of low rate, and then did one extreme sports game and then went back to what they were doing otherwise. Sorry to jump back to this really quickly, but the song in the background night right now is um, "Seasons" by Future Islands, which is also the song that had that famous Letterman performance of it's like this like poppy synth new wave song with like a metal vocalist. Who does like, who has this like really deep like growly vocal style? Like he's not screaming or anything, but it's like he really like goes into like the growl on the Letterman performance and it has like uh, several million views. That's the other song from this game that I just knew of beforehand. Not, not this song on Letterman, right? <laughs> no, it was this song. It was this exact song. What? So like seasons change turned into you know, like, he's like seasons like, change. No, it's like seasons change. What the like, hell? Cause yeah. like, cause like, the songs in this game, you know, going back to the soundtrack, uh, you know, there's like one of this, one of that, one of that, almost literally one of this, that, that. Yeah. But it is just kind of like just snowboard chill. Like I could see every song being in a snowboard video. That's really the only yeah. way I can describe this soundtrack. It's not like they went yeah. mostly rock, mostly electronica, mostly da da da. It's just yeah. it's weird to hear you like list off, you know, these bands and such as bands you know were so again considering yeah. it. I didn't even know that was Iggy Pop, you know, that one song. It it sounded yeah. like it really was just kind of yeah. I don't know. I mean it, it was almost like an like Iggy they took Pop it all song from one sampler C D. Yeah. It was uh, like it was an Iggy Pop song from, I think, the year this game came out, so it's like... Really? Yeah. The recording quality made me think, oh, yeah, Iggy Pop, he recorded back in what, like yeah, the 90s? No. And they just... Huh. Yeah. Okay, this event is my kryptonite. I do not know how to do well on this event, especially since, again, several of the challenges are contrasting. Like, you have to go for those challenges specifically. You know, like, get an 80 out of 100 tricking off of the flagged objects. When it's like you saw the flagged objects at the beginning were, you know, like a rail combo. I I have no idea, like, what to do in rail combos. And also, before, like, a lot of these jumps at the end, especially the last jump, there's something that'll kick you up off the snow, and if that does happen, it'll just, like... Yeah. Ruin and reset any pre-winding you've done. It's that just... is, yeah, that is this game's kryptonite. If you catch any air while you're winding something up, it will reset your pre-wind. Yeah, but it it only kind of specific happens at specific points. But one of them is well, actually several of them are before the big jumps on this track. Yeah, so I just I don't know this. I don't know how to do this well, and this is like, again, why this is not going to be a 100% LP. Because, yes, I got all the challenges in this, in this game once, but across, like, hours of maybe working on one specific one and trying to figure out what it was doing, and I did not want to spend that time again a second time. Yeah. So it's going to happen every time on this event here while recording. Yeah, I, I remember that now. That specific jump, just you had to hit it at a very specific angle. I, maybe this is one of those things where, just like the half pipe thing, if you trick too much, you get less point. You know, you're rated yeah. out of less points. But it's like, again, trick off the flagged objects. Okay, that's like four or five things already there. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I kind of eight figured out how to explain that whole sort of thing about like only tricking a certain amount in the half pipes or these kind of events where y you see that there's, you know, it, it adds up your tricks and da da da, it rates them on certain things. and But then there's also a separate rating 
I guess it's rated, I don't know, what, just like the cleanness or overall or something out of 40. Because yeah. um, the game so, already cares enough about, uh, you know, how right. clean you're doing your tricks. So, all right, there's always going to be something out of 40. But then also, yeah, so if you only do like four tricks, those are all rated out of 15, so add that up. 60, 60 plus 40, 100. If you do like five tricks, they're all rated out of 10. Add that up. 50 plus 40, only 90. If you do like six tricks, they're all rated out of like eight. So like 48 plus 50, or plus 40 is 88. So you literally have less points to work with if you trick five times or six times compared to like four. Again, yeah. I don't know about three or less because I, I got yeah. in, got out. I think, I'm trying to think of if that's realistic or not, because when you watch the X Games, you watch them like do slope style runs there are specific features and you do one trick per feature and they are sort of stacked in that way like they're all parallel to each other so that you can only go off of one per set of feature so it's like okay i guess in a real slope style run you do have four tricks to do that you plan out in advance but like i don't i don't know uh, yeah Maybe and that's then like half pikes Everyone kind of does the same amount of tricks down a half pipe because you just, oh, maybe I'm yeah. being really ignorant here, but like just from how you go down it, you go up one side, get air, come down later on, go up the other side, get air, yeah. come down later on. So no one is trying to force like eight tricks out in a half pipe. It's again, naturally humans do it a certain way and humans rate what humans have done yeah. a certain way but this game has some arbitrary programming code that's looking for a certain thing yeah like especially like you're going up there with a routine that maybe you mess up and again in the x games if you mess up a trick on the half pipe your run's over like you're not gonna get that speed back and even if you do somehow miraculously break physics and get your speed back enough to do another cork, like, the judges are still going to be like, okay, you fucked up that one trick, we're not going to give you a lot of points. So, if you fuck up a trick in a half pipe, you just finish your run there. Right. Whereas in this game, you could hypothetically get your speed back if you, like, go back and forth enough. And it's, yeah, and again. And then... Again, like, you go up off the half pipe, you're probably going to be getting the same amount of speed each time, given that you land all of your tricks cleanly enough. So you're probably just going to have a set amount of jumps you could expect to do on this downward slope. Yeah, I don't know, because it feels like we're saying all of this, and then, like, literally every other video game operates the same way. But you never notice it in other video games. That's true. I guess because, like, either they're better at being simulations, or they are just looking for, like, oh, get as many points as you can in this half-pipe sort of thing. And nothing where it's, like, it's, like, actually punishing you for going for five tricks over four just by the way it's programmed. And now that I think about it, other than, I guess, if we want to give it to Amp, what other snowboarding simulations are there besides, like, before this? I, I like guess. the ESPN Winner yeah. X Games games that were bad enough that I didn't even want to do full play yeah, of them. But that some people not, swear by, you know. Yeah, that is true. And from what I remember of those games, they do at least attempt a more realistic scoring system in which each event like, grades you as if it's a competition run and you don't, like, passively accumulate points for each trick you do. Like, there's a judging system in every event in that game. But also, I don't remember. I've never played the game. Yeah, okay, I I just kind of bounce off of these simulation-y games. Like, I got way more enjoy- Call me a simpleton. I got way more enjoyment out of Writer's Republic and probably will out of Steep than I did out of this game and Shredders, you know. I mean, Shredders is better, I think, but Shredders is like seven, like five, six years later, you know. Yeah, that game they, came out last year. 
yeah, they were able to refine it, but like that things have really gone towards this sort of physics-y, you know, uh, effort or so. I, I don't like one thing. <laughs> just, just on the topic it's of not shredders, what I want to play. I remember from like the pre-release hype, like specifically coming from the developers and like the lead director from that project. They grew up playing Amped, like they. Like, they would post screenshots of their office, and they would have, like, copies of Amped and SSX on, like, their wall. But specifically, it was Amped 2 that they mentioned that they really liked. Yeah, but their programmer made the snowboard game. That's so true. So that yeah. is obviously how it That's works. Sick. Yeah. That's how things be. Because, I mean, there is... It's almost like there can be... I don't want to say a half and half, but I mean, compare, you know, Skate series to Tony Hawk, but then compare Skate series to sh to uh, Session as well. You know, in, in the Skate series, the Flick It felt, you know, way more realistic, but then you get to where Session is using both thumbsticks and you have to, like, literally time your, you know, popping and catching in a certain way. And it's almost kind of like, you know... Uh, like, maybe Skateboarding somewhere in is the horrible. middle. Yeah. Okay, so that was, uh, Tier 3. We're going to Tier 4 next time. Join us then.